I really want to make a bunch of stupid puns in this video, but I won't. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. Welcome back to another episode of Huge Fly Fisherman. Thanks as always for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. Today I'm gonna learn you about reels, the thing that holds your fishing string. Reels are what separates us from cane pole fishermen and makes us better than them. You can call it a winch if you wanna sound cool, but be careful, if you call it a wench, I'm gonna know you're a bait dunker and you probably spell flies like this. All right, first let's talk about budgeting. Most of you don't need an expensive reel. Unless you're going for very large fish that can pull your arms off, you'll be fine with a basic reel. I'm not saying you should buy the cheapest reel you can find on Amazon, but you don't need a $500 reel to catch 12 inch browns on the Soho. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's this. Put your money into the rod and a premium fly line and skimp on the reel. The caveat to that is if you're fishing for big fish that pull hard. I'm talking Talking about tuna, giant tarpon, marlin, diesel trucks, stuff like that. For those fish, you're gonna need a good drag system on your reel. Drag is the resistance your reel creates to pulling out line. How hard is it to pull out the line? If you're fishing for those big fish, you'll need a good drag and they aren't cheap. A good drag is one that has low startup inertia, lots of stopping power, and durability so it doesn't explode on that first big run. Most of you are going to overestimate the drag that you need. If you're a trout fisherman, you can get away with a basic drag. I don't care if you think you're catching monsters, a basic reel is fine. What about salt water? You need a good drag, right? Well, bull redfish don't pull as hard as you might think. You don't need a thousand dollar reel. But on the other side of things, even a small bonefish might destroy your dad's old batten kill. One more quick note about drag, a sealed drag system is usually better, especially in salt water, because corrosion. All right, let's talk about materials. What's the reel made of? We have plastics and composites, and we have metal. Composites will be cheaper and less durable. Metal will be more expensive and can take a little more abuse. With metal reels, you have two categories. Cast metal reels, which are not great, and reels machined from bar stock, which is what you want. Let's talk about the different parts of a reel. This is the foot. That's the smelly part where it attaches to your pole. This is called the frame. This part has the drag system and holds this part, which is called the spool. The spool holds the line and attaches to the frame. This part of the spool is called the arbor. That's where you attach your backing. This part is called the handle. Try to avoid getting chicken grease on that part. You might consider getting more than one spool for your reel. That way you can switch out different lines on your reel quickly and easily. Let's talk about care and maintenance of your reel. First, you can get your reel wet. That's fine. You can dip it in the water, but try to keep it out of the sand and mud. Grit is not good for your reel. It's not a bad idea to grease this spindle every now and then, unless you like squeaky reels. If you're fishing in salt water, rinse your reels at the end of the day, because again, corrosion. Let's talk about size and balance. Reels come in different sizes and a specific size reel is meant for a range of different rod weights. Like this reel is good for a four, five, or six weight and this one is meant for a nine or ten weight rod. Match the size of the reel to the size of the rod. It should balance on your finger right in this area with a line on the reel. All right, now for the editorial part of the video. These are my opinions and I don't care if you disagree. Agree. It's my video. I'm not gonna talk about which hand you should reel with because I already made a whole video about that. And in case you didn't know, you can switch the direction of your retrieve on your reel. All right, how about click versus no click? Do you want your reel to make sound? If you've ever said, listen to that reel sing, baby, you're a dork. Some guys like to hear the reel when a fish is taking drag, but I think they really want 
other people to hear it. Personally, I like a silent reel. I know I have a fish on, I don't need to hear it. Also, I catch so many fish, if my reel made noise, I'd probably go deaf. What about designer reels? Have you seen those? Maybe your reel is anodized, or it has a steal your face, or artwork, or a fish pattern. Pretty cool, or a total waste of money? I bet you can guess what I think. All right, and that's gonna do it for this video. A quick, basic rundown of reels. You can certainly nerd out more if you want, but that's the gist of it. Thanks again for watching my video today. I'll be back as soon as I can with another huge fly fisherman video for you. Until then, Tenkara is not fly fishing, and stay huge. I should be out fishing, but I'm stuck here working with a beer in my hand. Poor me. Cheers.